What up, what up, what up? Welcome back to another episode of Cultivated Ignorance. I am Will, the host. I am Mike, the favorite and sleepy host. <laughs> um, this week, this new episode, we're going to be talking about uh, the Kanye documentary. I don't know if anybody's seen it. That shit was hella dope to me, um, especially being a fan of Kanye. It's just cool to see all the all the old stuff. Um, so we're going to be talking about Genius, kind of our thoughts on that. Yeah. Um, we're going to be talking about the GOAT, Brittany Renner. Uh, oh, it got us. Making Cam look bad <laughs> once again. Uh. Um, but it's not just about making Cam look bad. She does have some good points in what she says. Yeah. Um, and then we're also going to be talking about marriage. Is is marriage still the thing out here for men? Like, is it is it still a thing we want to do out here in these streets? Do you niggas want to be married is the question we're asking. <laughs> um, you know, like, I guess how we see what those benefits are in this no. new day and age. No. So, um, yeah, we're going to be talking about all that. It's going to be fun. But if you haven't, Go on to that patreon.com slash cultivated ignorance. Patreon. Oh, dude, was one of us supposed to pull it up? Oops. Go that right quick. Yeah, I'm about to do it right now. Okay. Go that thing right quick and uh help your boys out. Oh, accept them cookies. Um <laughs> uh it's only five dollars a month. We ain't asking if you do the, these crazy tears, you know. We just need the minimum child support from y'all. Every month, okay. I'll support. We have still doing all our <laughs> patrons. Exactly. Um, we just finish up our euphoria reviews. Yes. Our final thoughts on the season ending. Um, we are going to probably do Batman. Maybe after Will watches it again because he fucked oh, up. I the do. Third yeah, month. I can't. Yeah, we can't do that because I. <laughs> I was sleep during the movie, y'all. So golly. I don't know if that says anything about the movie itself. It doesn't. It says absolutely nothing about the movie itself. Everything about your watch. There's nothing about the movie. I will tell you one thing I do know that says something about the movie. They play Ave Maria the whole movie. And Ave Maria somehow has two credits at the end of the movie. Because it's a classic. Two separate credits. (laughs) You can't get enough of it. Two different renditions of that shit. All of them relevant to the movie. (laughs) Um, Yeah, man. Go on there. Subscribe. Yeah. Let your boys get five dollars. Please. We just got a patron the other day, matter of fact. Shout out to them. I got a lit 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 lit. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, patreon.com slash cultivated ignorance. Sign up. Yeah, man. Appreciate everybody who's already donating because we really, really <clears throat> got really help us out tremendously. So well, thank y'all so much. Absolutely. So uh yeah, man. What you been up to? Hey man, you know, I have been a how are you man along with you, you know, here just blowing money fast. Um BMFing. We so tired because we both bought like our first Lambos yesterday and we literally drove them like all night last night. Yeah. Um we had we had to drive them down from Vancouver. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, picking up several women and getting them pregnant along the way and driving them off on the way back. Um so kind of exhausted from that. But other than that, you know, watching Batman. Um Watching bland UFC fights, stuff you like thought, that. You thought the main event was bland? The main event was I, right, but yeah, the card before that. Okay, we didn't order that. <laughs> Thank God we didn't. I would have been pissed off. <laughs> yeah, man, just enjoying stuff that Columbia has to offer and just. <laughs> what is that? Well, we had a big entrepreneur um, workshop summit um, yesterday at the Metropolitan Center. Oh, okay. um, it was like five five hours, and like I saw some of my friends out there had really good guest speakers. Uh, it was dope, man. You got you got stuff popping. It's more than just college kids and bars, for the most part. It's Confederate flags and yes, that's the, that's the <laughs> yeah, man. How you been, man? I've been living, baby. I've been living, making this money. No, cooking for myself. What? Been cooking. Sounds like a lie to me. No, man, I made a lasagna. That shit was to die for. You made a lasagna from scratch? Or did you put the Stouffer's shit in the oven? No, bro, I made a lasagna from scratch. I need to see I this. Sauce. Yeah. I made the sauce from, uh, you know, like crushed tomatoes and, you know, some other tomato. <laughs> it sounds like bullshit. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> tomato form, other forms of tomatoes. <laughs> you just got random tomatoes and put them in a, a layer of noodles and called it a lasagna. Bro, that shit was 
lit. I need proof. I need to call Taryn. She probably picked the shit for you. No, nah, you can call McKenzie. McKenzie ate some. Taryn didn't eat none. I don't know why she was out here hating on me. But um, she thought she was nasty. Yeah, I did that. Um, you know, I made some. I made, I made some air fryer chicken. That shit was not hard, but <laughs> I made some. There was no like. There was no. There's no skill involved in that. Throw the seasons on. <laughs> air fryer is literally just a new age microwave. That's all it is. It really is, and it's so easy. That's great. Um, but yeah, man, just chilling. That's good, man. I'm glad you make it so. So, continuing in our great television, um, just finished watching Euphoria. Yeah. Now, this Kanye doc has been coming out. Three part <laughs> Kanye uh, documentary called Genius. Yeah. It follows Kanye basically throughout the majority of his career. It focuses really on. Uh, the time before the college dropout came out, the time shortly after the college dropout came out, I would more so say uh, late registration to maybe like the beginning of graduation. Mm-hmm. And then it uh, and then it skips a lot of years and it kind of gets back into, you know, where his mental is over the course of some years, uh, particularly like 2018 to 20. So. What'd you think, man? I mean, you know, if, if y'all watch this show, y'all know we kind of over Kanye nowadays. Um, you know how much we hated Donda. I think that was both of our worst album of last year. Yeah. Um, Booty. Everything he's, yeah, everything he's pretty much put out lately is kind of boo-boo. Um, this whole weird shit with him being obsessed with Pete Davidson is fucking strange and sad. Pete. Skeet. <laughs> yeah. Hey, so on a side note, we just got a new manager at my office. And my man's name is Pete. And like, no, no, no shade to him. Every time I think of his name, I want to say Ski. <laughs> you going to say it one day. Every single time. I, I promise you I won't. <laughs> if it slips out, it'd be the funniest shit ever. Um, yeah, that shit, him basically stalking Kim Kardashian is fucking gross. Um, just, just over it. That being said, this documentary <laughs> is probably... I can't think of another documentary I've seen in my life that I love more than this series of. They're both about an hour and a half. Um, mm-hmm. All of them are flames. Like, it's just amazing. Like, as longstanding Kanye fans, just seeing Kanye, not only from his early stages of just being, you know, just a local beat maker, trying to make it and trying to prove himself, to just seeing this, this the intimate sessions of the the classic albums that we hold so near and dear like college dropout and late registration um even later albums like kids see ghosts like seeing like how those were created in real time but more specifically going back in time and seeing how college dropout was created when like jamie fox and kanye was looking like little babies out here yeah that shit was fucking crazy bro i thought my favorite part was like you because you hear about kanye struggling to get on yeah, like he says it like pretty much the whole first album. Yeah, like you hear about it, and like I'm a I'm a huge fan of uh one of the last songs on Kanye's album. I can't remember the name of the song right now. Last What's call, it? right? Last call, yeah. And he basically outlines like his whole journey. <laughs> yeah, from, like being a from being a producer to like getting the late to getting college dropout release, and like. When you see it on TV, when you see all these things that he said he went through, it's like confirmation and like, yo, this nigga is dope. Like, this nigga yeah. really, you know, kind of worked through some shit. Like, yeah. you really see the struggle. Yeah, like you realize he wasn't like, um, you know, a friend of our podcast, FD Signifier, talked about how Kanye broke what's called like kayfabe, which is you know that whole like. You know, rappers just pretend to be gangsters and shit yeah. or pretend to be his persona on screen but you know they're not really living that life mm-hmm. like Kanye has always been himself it adds like validity to that in that Kanye like you said last call was like a 10 minute song of him talking about like everything he went through to make it and yeah. you would think that's just a rapper talking shit like nobody loved me till I got rich whatever whatever but when you actually see it play out exactly the way he described it in the song yeah. like literally going through Rockefeller records and maybe it's not the healthiest thing, but him just going into different rooms, just playing his music, and people just looking at him like, I right, nigga, I mean, it's, it's cool. <laughs> like, it's, <laughs> like, yeah. like, 
seen that actually play out in the actual in real in real life, not like a depiction of it in a you know a biopic, but the actual footage is surreal. To say it, it really is. Yeah, I mean, it's so funny because like when when we when when these songs came out, they were hot. Mm. Why weren't they hot when he was going through the Rockefeller offices? Like, why weren't people latching on to it the way like we instantly, you know, loved it? And why were they just like weirded out by the whole process? I think definitely in Kanye's, you know, behavior, you could call it problematic in like in how he approached, like if, for instance, barging into the offices and just playing his music. I don't know the culture of a record company. Maybe that's normal, mm. but I would think in any other instance, like a man just barging into your office and playing his music super loudly at that would be very off-putting. Yeah, I guess, but like at the same time, like you have, I would assume that like he has a relationship with these people on some level with him, you know, producing a good bit of uh, <clears throat> blueprint. That's a good point. And in that, I think that the, the main thing is that they saw him as only a producer, like like he was telling us this whole time as they couldn't detach. They couldn't extract a rapper out of this persona who's from Kanye of just he's just a beat maker. That's just what he do. Even Dame Dash, who brought him in, loved him, signed him, even after he signed him, like still wasn't. Like, Dame really still wanted him to just produce. Yeah, yeah, like. It was so I think that's it. They just could not see the vision. And shout out to Cootie, which is his homeboy who was on some homeboy who's recorded all the footage to be able to see like what Kanye would become from the jump street and just be like, I believe in this man so much. I'm just going to follow him around and record him. Yeah. What, who has friends like that? Like how many people have friends like that? He's just going to I'm going to put my life on hold and just record you because I know you're going to make it. Yeah. That's just wild. What was your favorite moments? Because I got like three favorite, like. Um, so my three, one of my three favorite moments, and I'm going to say this one for you, King, was seeing Jamie Foxx and Kanye record slow jams. You bitch. <laughs> Bro, that shit was so amazing. It was. Like. <laughs> <laughs> it was. Bro, just the jam session itself. Yeah. Like seeing Jamie super young. And they like and like Kanye saying what he wants Jamie to say. And then Jamie kind of taking it to his own. Yes. Like, putting his own flavor on it. And it seeing seems- Jamie Foxx record, like, cause the way he the way Slow Jams is recorded, the intro is like, uh, I'm gonna say, you know, I was talking to this girl all fast in the club, you know, she was she danced like 9200 something back to back. And then like the the funniest part of the whole thing is like when Jamie says, uh, and, and, and you know what you know, he, he, like that part, like the part where he stutters, yeah, like you would think it's, I guess, scripted because it's so like the, the stutter is so out of nowhere, yeah, yeah, but like that was just Jamie putting his own little sauce on it. It was and watching Kanye see that shit, like when he's watching him, like listening to him, and like, yeah. Seeing him, he's like, yeah, nigga, that's what I wanted him to do, yeah, like. <laughs> That shit's crazy, y'all. Y'all don't even understand. Unless you ain't shit. So beautiful. <laughs> For sure. I, yeah. I think we just like as a people or as fans, we don't see the creation process. And so when we saw it, yeah. it gave us not just uh you know great feelings about what we had ab- absorbed, you know, years ago like that nostalgia feeling mm-hmm. but like it connected us to the song a little bit more because you see that not everything is i guess uh super super perfect super polished is when it comes out yeah you know what i mean like seeing the creation process gives you a, a more of a connection to the song and the things we consume so that was definitely one of my favorite parts A thousand percent. And I think more so because whenever we do see the creation process these days, it's highly scripted. I guess it's it's highly curated. It's like, you know how you do the little commercials of like they're your favorite musicians, usually, especially like the Modelo commercials was like, I forgot what artist they had on there. Who was it? They were making songs (laughs) and like they had the, the camera like watching them like make beats and shit like that. 
and like it was just all very curated and it was like you know this is enjoyable to watch sure but you know this is fucking fake and to see the realness of like a studio session especially for that album in that period of time for someone who still feels like they're not being seen the way we see them crazy um it was that part um I don't know if it was one of my favorite parts, but it was a very real moment when they were talking about Kanye being on stage and his wife or Kim K- Kim Kardashian getting, uh, I don't know if it was mugged or- Yeah, robbed and the house got broken yeah, into. Yeah, in Paris. Yeah. And like, I guess they 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 say it in the midst of like, him being, I guess, this douchey character. You know what I mean? Um, but like a the world report comes out where Kim K got robbed, and they immediately cut to like Kanye say, like, I got a family emergency. I gotta shut the show down. Uh-huh. Which was real, like, because <clears throat> for years we kind of disliked Kanye. Um he seemed more of like just a celebrity and not this person that we could really connect with until that moment. So I really appreciated that, that like, it showed that despite people, you know, having this uh, hard shell that we really can't connect with, yeah. you know, that moment right there um, was just real. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I don't know, man, I gotta think about a third one. What you got? I definitely have the scenes with him and his mom in that first act. Yeah. Um, as just top five that are, I mean, you can go from the, whether it be the scene with them in the dining room together and her just, you know, just, just remarking and just reveling in his successes and everything he says that he's doing that she just blows up every single, <laughs> everything she mentions. Mm-hmm. Um, her looking at his little angel piece and everything and telling him, you know, he's like a guardian angel and stuff. Her giving him the, uh, the giant metaphor of a giant, you know, looks in the mirror and sees nothing. China and, and attempt to keep him grounded, but that shit didn't work clearly. But like yeah. it's telling him to remain humble and stuff to so them just walking <laughs> in that field together and just oh, just standing on that fucking staircase. Just just shout out to Cootie, bro. Like just you need <laughs> friends that's just gonna capture these moments for you. That shit was just ah, I got choked up on that. Um, especially when you know what ultimately happened to Dr. Dr. West. Um, of course, the slow jams joint, you already stole that. Cause you're a whore. Um, Bro, I mean, that was that was obvious. But. Right. But I think one thing, and this is for the documentary as a whole, like how much the documentary wasn't just about Kanye. It, it really seemed like it wasn't so much about just Kanye as it was about this dude who saw this man named Kanye becoming who he is today. Yeah. Um, and him grappling with, you know, him in order for him to get there, they have to be, you know, they had to part ways in a sense because you know this this industry will pull you apart from those most intimate to you and and it, i love how much it showed how he his life kept going on regardless of what kanye had going on like he they showed at the in the third act in particular how they showed when he had his daughter <coughs> and mm-hmm. him and kanye was basically not talking anymore and him just showing like you know him just loving father fatherhood and how his daughter's growing up but Kanye still has a massive influence on his household in that his daughter is seeing Kanye all the time and she's just doing his her thing and he's just that, that whole like interchanging it's this whole intermingle of scenes when he's showing like the daughter growing up and Kanye going into all kind of crazy shit along with the giant metaphor like this little animation all intermingle with one another that was just supreme oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my god like these niggas I get all the awards so I think it's that and just yeah it's just a this is amazing and I think I think it really shows like how especially as black men you know we're just constantly Kanye is a perfect story of like we have to constantly prove ourselves in this country like we feel like we have to constantly prove ourselves to the yeah. point that you have to even if you're not like Kanye having to say it out loud all the time you feel yourself having to prove yourself in every white space white majority space that you enter and it shows like what it does to somebody who's doing that and dealing with mental issues and trying to be a superstar in this industry that just thrives off of just turning in and out people who are relevant one, relevant one day and un, in, irrelevant the next day. 
and and all all this is being played on the public eye. Like it's like, how would you not get a Kanye out of a situation like that? Like a Yeezy, a Yeezy out of that situation. Yeah, like it's just really remarkable to watch. So, yeah, um, good stuff. I also really enjoyed the fucking Life of Pablo listening session at the Garden, always, which I'm always, always yeah, like. Yeah. That shit is beautiful. Like just to see, like essentially, like a sold out Madison Square Garden. Yeah. Or like niggas is just like having a little listening session for yeah. hours, like in the middle of everything. <laughs> and like all celebrities just like bundled up, just like hanging out, like they would. <laughs> like it's a fucking house party. Like. Absolutely. No, that was I've had shows like that. Like we just had a DJ playing a song. We just all just around them and just. It was just vibing the shit, and they, everybody's just feeling the crowd is just feeling the shit, and we just that shit was dope as fuck. That shit is so cold. <laughs> hey, you on the fucking Kanye on the fucking keys, just <laughs> yeah, yeah. But man, I'm telling you, this shit really reminded me of how much I love fucking Kanye. Yeah, yeah. This new version is hard to get with, but Charlie. This old version, bro, I love College Dropout. This shit reminded me why I love College Dropout. Yeah, man. Yeah. It did. Yeah, man. So what what didn't you like or what didn't you kind of know about Kanye before this doc? I don't know if there's anything I didn't know or dislike. I I really don't think there's anything I dislike about this thing. Because you remember I told you, like, what I feared going into it was it would be just a you know, all praise, yeah, all praise Jesus <laughs> celebration yeah. series. And it was not that at all. Um, it definitely was just very, very real. And I'm sure they took a lot of stuff out, but um, I think it's just the, the most thing for me is it shows his mental health, man. And it just, the most, I guess the most thing, the most hurtful thing for me is he can see how his mental health is playing out in these outbursts, um, whether it be like the little meeting he had with the white dudes, the little real estate owners and stuff. I, I can't remember their names. That nigga started going off. He was just going off and shit, or like the stuff with you know, how he just processes thoughts and how he handled his mother's death and what people were trying to tell him versus what he was thinking. The whole thing with TMZ, like it troubles me that he can see all these things again. And he's been seeing it, but see it again in his documentary form, and he still doesn't think he needs any help. Like that's the most hurtful thing for me. It's like, damn, bro. Like you have all the evidence, so it's like harder and harder to go hard for you when you just don't want to take this as <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like you want to take this as the initiated to be like, okay, let me let me go get some help, man. Yeah, I wish he had shown a little bit more about his dad. Um, because uh, yeah. obviously like, he has a real connection with his dad. Yeah, real relationship. Yeah. But I think the only time we even got more mention of his dad is in that uh, in that last little Facetime conversation. Yeah, you know, and I kind of brings him up on his albums, you know, a decent amount. Mm. Um, so that was about the only thing I was kind of, you know. Missing from it. I agree with that. <clears throat> yeah. Do you think that, like, so off of genius now, do you think that Kanye is legit stalking him, or do you think that he is desperate to try and get his family back? And, like, I understand, like, the, the whole buying the house across the street from her thing. It seems creepy. But at the same time, like, after I thought about it, like, wouldn't you want your kids to be able to just walk across the street? <laughs> I mean, like, legit, like, if you really no. think about it, I don't know his, I don't know his true motivations for it. It's easy to say, like, you know, he's stalking. That's easy. That's the easy thing. But I mean, it's probably layered. Like, it, it would make sense for it to be a layered decision. You know what I mean? No, I get what you're saying, but if it weren't for all the other components of him still calling him her, her his, his wife, um, him doing all this shit with Pete Davidson, like, I made a post about the Easy video. I don't know if you watched it. Did you watch that yet? 
Mm-mm. Oh, you should watch it. Um, you know the song Easy he did with um the game. Yeah. The other day. He made a video of it. And it's, <clears> a, it's a hella creepy video. And I love how creepy it is, but it's like parts of it of him holding like what's supposed to be Pete Davis's head in his his hand and shit while he's rapping. It's the decapitated head and shit. Mm. And another part with him is like burying Pete alive and like growing roses out of his head from his from burying him and growing roses out of it. And then he's a, he's a creative man. I don't know what you want him to do. <laughs> be creative, don't be creepy. Um, <laughs> or be creatively creepy, but don't be creepy in real life. But if it weren't for the obsession with and with Pete Davidson and literally just doing shit that you know could endanger because you know how crazy your fans are like you know pete could something could probably happen to pete and just not accepting the fact that kim Darius kardashian just doesn't want to be with you is that is that's the main element of you just you you out here making it out like god's telling you to harass this woman into staying with you and she don't want to be with you so if it weren't for all those until things, she, i mean until she does you know it's like I—I I mean, if I keep pushing it enough, it might happen. That's the grossest logic. So, and so you know, every everything will be creepy and bad and you know stalkerish until she says, "Okay, let's get." Back she together. says, "Yes." <laughs> That's terrible. Aren't y'all understanding about this? <laughs> oh, you got it, man. Uh, yeah, if it weren't for all that, it's just too much. It's, too, it's a man with too much power, and that's ironic enough. That's you know what was what's the way dark fantasy so great is he was talking about how crazy it is to be that you know just so, so anyone can go has that much power and influence when they're going through what they're going through. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a perfect example of that. Like this man got too much money, too much power, too much influence, and he just won't leave his woman alone. And it's just this is fucking weird, man. It's sad. So. That's how I feel. I don't know how you feel about it. Um, I'm be, I'm gonna be very clear. He might be stalking Kim K. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um, I, I don't know, man. For somebody who's mentally unstable, he's taking it about as he's taking it how I would expect a mentally unstable person to take it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sure. You know. Um, I hope he had all the right intentions when moving across the street from his kids. God. I hope. <laughs> I really hope. Do not think so. <laughs> <clears throat> um, but you know, man, he's really making her look good. <laughs> Bro, he making Kim Kardashian look like. <laughs> like imagine a world where niggas is rooting for Kim Kardashian. Like that. <laughs> that has never happened in in a very long time. I just hope it all works out. I hope Skeet stays safe. I do too. <laughs> it man, so- man will forever be known as Skeet. That's that's just so hard, man. You just want to enjoy the content, but it's just well, you know what's real. So tainted. <laughs> it's so t- like he has a bar and easy said like I don't negotiate with therapists. That's a hard ass yeah. bar. That is a hard ass bar. But when you know he actually doesn't go to therapy when he needs to go to therapy, <laughs> I, like, I can't be happy about this. But the bar is ill, though. The bar is nuts. So, <clears throat> oh yeah, and uh, I don't know if you saw this, Mike. This is another side note. What's that? The game said Kanye West did more for him in two weeks. I did see that. And Dr. Dre did his whole career. I need to know what the hell niggas is. <laughs> Niggas really be doing the most out here. Like, what could he have possibly done? The game would still be unsigned dude from Compton. Like, without Dre. And then he said he could be Eminem in the verses. Did you see that, too? The game said he could be Eminem in the verses? The game said he could be... And got offended when um Nori questioned this shit. Like, was ready to fight. <laughs> game let's slow down i don't like eminem no more but pretty sure eminem could light your ass up <laughs> everyone knows this that's yeah. <laughs> uh, niggas is it's the energy does something niggas brain like and, and it's understandable it's understandable but at the same time you gotta you gotta have the right people around you to ground you be like bro shut uh, up 
<laughs> All right, man. Um, so yeah, uh, Brittany Renner came back. <laughs> Brittany Renner decided to go back to uh, Cam's Frankie Fridays podcast, um, web web show, whatever you want to call it, and uh, proceeded to get another perfect on this nigga. <laughs> hey, I really want to like Cam Newton as uh, like a personality. Yeah. But he be saying some dumb shit. Well, I want to fully contextualize it for people who case they okay, didn't. I'm sorry. I was okay. I was doing too much. Oh, so, no, you're good. So if you don't know, like Brittany Renner, um, IG model, really before IG, um, she got popular off of Vine, right? I don't think so. I feel like she was popular. She, I definitely saw her popping on Vine and stuff before IG was like a thing. And okay. I didn't know that. Yeah, she was like, she's been out here for a very long time. Um, basically famous for just showing them, showing them ass cheeks, um, being light-skinned, being sexy and slender and all that good stuff. Has been out here for a very hot minute. And, you know, for the most part, just kind of minds her business, goes on IG net lately and just twerks, and then that's it. Um, I'm sure you heard by now, she had this whole scandal with P.J. Washington, who's a basketball player, where they broke up, and P.J. was alleging, alleging that she just wanted him for money and just to trap him and have a baby with him and then, you know, leave with the baby and take all his money. Everyone went along with the story. And ever since then, she's been, like, one of the biggest villains on IG. Like, to this day, you, anything she posts, it's going to be a good 20, 30 niggas don't need to post saying free PJ, free PJ, free PJ. <laughs> and they just made her out to be just the most deplorable human being ever. And she's been speaking out for herself. She's been going on. She went on this, this, this um talk with um Deion, was it Deion Sanders? I can't remember who it was. Yeah. She did. Had a, uh, she did talk with his football team at Jackson state. Yeah. Just telling them about like, if you decide to get caught up with one of these IG models, you got to know what comes with it. And just, tell, just talking in general, like, PJ had his own, you know, made up his own mind. He decided that he wanted to have unprotected sex with her and come in her. And with that comes a baby. And that's the decision he made. And this is the consequences. And it just didn't work out. And just been speaking up for herself. So Cam Newton invited her on his talk show. Don't know who gave Cam Newton the talk show. Don't know why. But he invited her on his... <laughs> Cam Newton gave Cam Newton the talk show. Yeah, I, yeah you're absolutely right. <laughs> absolutely right. And she, the point is for her to come on the show to clear up, you know, her image, not clear up her image, but just defend herself and just speak for herself instead of people speaking on her behalf. And that's supposed to be this, you know, real keeping it funky, keeping it 100, da 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 da. And Cam had her on before, had to bring her back on, and we can get to what they discussed. So, I mean, for the most part, it was more the same, right? Pretty much. It was just like more talking points. And- <clears throat> Is more so her just calling out the contra- the double standards of how men treat a woman who's out here having sex with whoever she wants to have sex with versus a man. How a woman is looked at when she's a baby mom versus how a man's looked at when he's a baby dad. And, yeah. and it went deeper. Like, she was just out here just dropping jewels. Nothing new, particularly new or mind-blowing, but just more than anything, calling out the contradictions and how men treat women, especially women who are Known to be IG models and stuff. And yeah. Um, well, there was a one part where she was saying it was like the biggest clip of the whole thing where she was like, so essentially Cam was so essentially Cam said, you should accept anybody if they're giving you 80% of what you want, right? Isn't that what something to that degree basically? <laughs> This is what he said, and he said, <clears throat> "You should be willing to you as the, I guess, victim in the situation, should be willing to try and work with that person yeah. on helping them get that additional twenty percent you need, yeah. whether it be cheating, financial stability. Um, I can't remember. He said one other thing. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> essentially, you should you are the person that should be trying to get them to where they need to be." Um, so cheating in particular, she basically posed the question like, 
So if, so if your daughters are dating a man who's giving them 80% of what they want, but they but they cheat on them, would you tell them that's okay? And she like put his feet to the fire, like, no, look at one of these fucking cameras. He was trying to dodge that shit like a mother. <laughs> Look at one of these cameras and say that to your children, to yeah. your two daughters. And like, he he never really did do it. <laughs> he eventually, no, he eventually said he can't tell her what to do because that's her relationship at the end of the day. So he oh, can't. Yeah. She's being satisfied or something like that? Yeah, she said, he said if she's satisfied with a man who's giving her everything that she needs, but he's a cheater, then he can't tell her otherwise. Which is bullshit. Like, I don't <laughs> see Cam bullshit. Newton... If your daughter out here just if a nigga just out here skating around on your daughter and you know it for a fact and just putting it in her face and you Cam Newton, you're not gonna be like, oh, that's her life. I can't, I can't do nothing about it. You're not doing that. Get out of my face. Yeah. Absolutely. Um it's funny, man, because like he he compared cheating to like being broke oh. or uh having like it's it was like being insecure or something like that. Let me t- okay. Here's the here's the um the basic sentence, <laughs> the scenario he gave her. He said, um, when you with somebody for a certain period of time and you break up with them, how long does it take for you to get those old um, you know, old tendencies, old, that old mindset out of your system when you date somebody new? So like if you date somebody for five or six years, how long would it take you to get out of those old practices that you had with that person? And she was like, probably a significant amount of time. So he was like, so if you deal, if you somebody who was in your last relationship, you was cheating and stuff, you was out here skeezing around, you're gonna have to take some time to get that out your system. So when a new person get with you, that new person has to give you like has to give you the grace and the what he say, the um <laughs> that new person has to help you get out of that old mindset of being a cheater, <laughs> basically, <laughs> and help you become like a faithful person. Like it was a whole over elaborate shit where Britney was just staring, like staring at him, like. <laughs> so because you cheated uh, in your last relationship, the new person should give you the leeway to cheat in this current relationship until you get it out your system. Basically, that's that's the basis of the argument How here. You like, get it out your system if you still cheat. We just gotta work it out. We just gotta <laughs> just gotta stay in there, and. What ultimately she came through with that was um well she said she put it on him, of course. She said, So you will put up with a cheat a woman who cheats? And of course he's you know, he skated around a little bit, you know, just did a little dance, but he eventually said, Yes, um, if I'm getting everything else I need. And it came down to she said, like, why don't men feel like they deserve like a whole holistic love? Like, why do y'all feel like y'all have to settle? Why would you feel like it's as Cam Newton, especially, even if she has money, she because she's like, You don't need money, like you got money. So if she's balling or whatever the fuck, like, why would you settle for someone who can't be committed and love you and be supportive and be sustaining and not cheat on you? Like, why don't you feel like you deserve that? Yeah. And he could not answer. He couldn't answer the question. Like, he was just like, so that's what came to one when this conversation is, is the issue, like, why so many men are, like, okay with being scumbags? Because, like, a lot of men just, just don't believe that we're deserving of holistic love. So you're saying like we're scumbags because we don't? No, I think what I'm asking is, do men justify scumbaggery by men because they don't see themselves as deserving of whole love? So like, why should you get it if I can't? Even oh. get it? Damn, that's deep. Mm. Um, <clears throat> I don't believe that. I think she made up. She brought up a good point. And she was she essentially she broke it down to like how can you really care about somebody or or something like that when you don't fully know how can you fully know somebody if you don't fully know yourself or something like that yeah and I think the same is true for men like we don't fully take the time to understand ourselves um you know <clears throat> uh just just how we tick so we go out here doing dumb shit. Yeah. But at the same time, I think we we think we deserve a proper love. Mm. We just don't know how to achieve it. Mm. And so with that being said, 
I think we just take whatever and do whatever very irresponsibly. Yeah. Because, you know, we don't have that clear pathway or, you know, a, a good model. That model being ourself as to how to properly love somebody. You know what I mean? No, I agree a thousand percent. We don't respect ourselves enough to, you know, demand the kind of love that we should get. I definitely think that's true for way too many men. And the irony of that is that Cam was literally telling her that she couldn't, if she didn't grow up in a household with like loving parents who were in a committed relationship, then how could she possibly know what that looks like? But he literally had that. Like he literally said that like he saw his parents, I forgot how long they've been together in a, in a married committed relationship in a, all in the same household. And he still, you know, is out here with seven kids and two baby moms. Like, that's really not bad. It's <laughs> what, what, seven kids, and, two baby moms. It's really not bad. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Period. I'm not. I'm not criticizing. You know, but I'm saying. I, that, I mean, but I feel like there is a general level of, to where like you out here doing dumb shit. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. He, I think he's equating like being. He was at one point equating being a baby mama who's not married to being someone who doesn't know what what, like real committed love looks like. So that's where you're at. Mm. The the, the hypocrisy is he saw that growing up and is still out here with seven kids and two baby moms that he has no intention on marrying and never did apparently. I thought he had intention on marrying that lady, that lady Kia, but like he was, I think he was on his fuck shit. I can't remember what the explanation he gave. Yeah. It was something like roundabout answer, like I wasn't giving her what she needed or something like that. Something like that, or like he also didn't see himself. Man, it it was some over the thing about Cam Newton. (laughs) It was some Cam answer. (laughs) Is he just he'd be trying to sound so smart? (laughs) Bless you. I'm sorry. Appreciate it. He'd be trying to sound so smart and so sophisticated. He'd be using words wrong, and it's not just. I'm not trying to be elitist. I'm not trying to you know. But it's just, it's that thing when niggas just trying to sound more smarter than they actually are versus just listening. Because at one point she was just trying to tell him, like, you're, <laughs> she was trying to tell him, like, you deserve holistic love as a man. And he was like, nah. And she was like, what are you even disagreeing with? <laughs> he was like, he couldn't even put a finger on it. Yeah. And granted, being a football player might have something to do with it. Like, you know, you get hit in the head a lot. And I don't know what his thought process is in general. I'm not trying to be funny. Like, you see this a lot with like athletes, particularly football players who just can't connect dots a lot of times. And so I don't even know if he knew what he was disagreeing with at that point. <laughs> <laughs> he was just like, I know you're not right, though. <laughs> but, I do like the fact that they touched on the double standards um, yeah. in their um, talk. And I don't know how you feel about this, but I would think that, you know, somebody of Brittany Renner's um, – intelligence level um of you know just her experience overall i would think that she would be okay with approaching a man especially because it seems like for the most part it seems like she know what she wants Mm, yeah 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 she was still she was still on the whole like no a man should approach me because it shows me that he knows what he wants when he approaches me it's almost like a scared of rejection kind of thing that's exactly what I, it like, is. I'm masking this fear of rejection by saying men should know what they want. So if they want me, they'll approach me. And like framing that as you, if you're not man enough to approach me, then that says something about you, not about me. Yeah, like- <laughs> that was the only two, one of two things that I didn't, I was like, Brittany, I don't know. It was that part. <laughs> and when they asked her, if she, if we became actually asked if he, if she would date a bisexual man, and she was like, oh, I, I, I don't know. I but, do she, that. But, she, but she even, I, to her credit, I will give her that. Like, she she was the one that kind of brought up the double standard yeah. thing at first about how men do not get to explore their sexuality without automatically being labeled gay. That's what was crazy about it, though, that she brought but it I up. I feel like there's, there's so many women that yeah. think like that. She's not like, she's not out of the norm in that. Like, no, not at all. No. Yeah. Bisexual, biphobia is very prevalent, especially in women who like like super masculine men absolutely yeah. um but that was, that was what's ironic about it is 
She called it out, and then she was like, but yeah, also, I'm not dating no bisexual man. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, all right. Oh, no, I'm not with the shits, man. I, I, can, I can talk about it, like, yeah. you know, this is great in speech, you know, but, oh, in practice? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was the only part. Um, but for the most part, oh, I do want to get this part in, though. So we both agree that Brittany Renner has some great points, raised yeah. up some real... um. Real solid, solid points about just men's hypocrisy. But that being said, uh, somebody said to me a long time ago that as a, especially as a content creator or as any public figure, it is very easy to go from being someone who's like initially serious, like say for instance, like a news reporter or somebody who's just an essayist, a, you know, some type of researcher who's very serious. Like Neil deGrasse Tyson is a perfect example, who has like a very serious career, right? Yeah. And very sophisticated. It's very easy to go from that to being something that's silly. Like, so Neil, you guys, Tyson can be a super serious scientist, but can do funny content that to educate you. Yeah. But it's very hard to be someone who's not, comes out as someone not to be taken seriously, a comedian, um, like a, in this case, an IG model, who's just out here just getting paid to just shake your ass all day. Mm-hmm. To go from that to be someone that I want to be taken seriously now with a serious topic is very, very hard. Um, what I'm asking is, is it logical? Cause she's, she made a point about like, dudes just want IG models to shut up and shake, your, shake our asses. And I'm not like, speaking out about it. And I'm like, you deserve to be respected for sure. Regardless, mm-hmm. but as far as Nick's attitudes of like, we don't really want to hear you talk. We just want to see your ass jiggle. Is she really, is this not what she signed up for? Like when she decided to pursue this as her career? Um, it's a hard, it's a hard question. Yeah, it is. But like people, her fans should have the, I guess, depth to understand that, like, she's a human being, you know, that does more things besides shaking her ass. But at the same time, like, she should understand her fan base. Like, while we're here. And what they're here for. Yeah, that's what I'm asking. Is she asking too much by saying, like, I know y'all just here to see my ass and titties, but now I want to sit like some, like, drop some jewels and y'all need to No, she's she's not asking too much. But you have to understand that your fan base will change. You think that's her point? That she you think she wants her fan base to change? Um, I think she's probably okay with it as long mm-hmm. as it don't fuck up the bunny. But I guess we'll see how that goes. You know what I mean? Yeah, you might be right. Um, and I don't think your fan base would change too drastically, mm-hmm. but like just your some of them would just be uninterested. It's kind of like how, <laughs> and I know you can attest to this as well. Like when you follow an IG model, and then like she gets pregnant, and then like she starts posting baby pictures. <laughs> <laughs> it's like okay i'm not here for this like <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> i don't unfollow him like you do oh, I, I, straight, follow I, him. Follow him. I don't do all that i straight up sent a uh one of my one of the ladies i followed capri carter mm-hmm. she had gotten pregnant boy i messaged her and i said congratulations on the baby <laughs> but i'm not here for this and i unfollowed <laughs> i don't know if she ever saw it But, like, that's just the real shit. Oh, my God. That's hilarious. You know, like, you you take people in at the capacity that you want them there at. No, you're right. (laughs) So, like, you know, you're going to lose some people and you're going to gain some people. You'll you'll obviously, I think you'll obviously gain more than you lose. Because, I mean, I don't think talking is going to distract, take away so many people. Because, I mean, you're still going to be shaking ass at some point, I'm sure. I don't know, man. I don't think... I think the dudes who use, like, IG models as, like, a... First of all, we treat celebrities in general, but especially internet celebrities, as, like, a pure commodity anyway. So it's, like, the second they step outside of anything... When I say we, I mean us collectively. For the most part, like, are they not commodifying themselves? Yeah, for sure. But I'm saying that in in the culture... It's been particularly in a hyper-capitalist culture of like, 
it's one thing of I'm I'm fine and I found a way to make money off my beauty by modeling or something like that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's another thing when you're in a culture of like Instagram models where you have an endless cycle of beautiful women just being brought in, brought out, and you're as a consumer, you just want to keep looking at <laughs> ass and titties. Yeah. And so the second this your favorite ass and titties decides to step a little bit outside the box and do like a voice note on the whole Ukraine situation, for example. Like people react, and I don't know how real the anger is, but people react like, shut up and show your ass. Like, I don't care about your thoughts on this shit. Like people act like they're like, actually offended by you not fulfilling your role. <laughs> yeah, it's ass and titty girl number 568. So I think some people will genuinely be upset and just be like, ah, British written fell off of me. And I think that's fine. Like, I think that's fine that some people are like genuinely just pieces of shit and like it can't accept that, like, <laughs> like you have to, like, I, I guess my thing is like you have to be able to accept that, like, people, um, you know, have layers to themselves. You know what I mean? Yeah. They can be two things at once. Obviously, everybody is at least more than one thing at once. I mean, yeah. you know, so. <clears throat> If you're gonna be there for it, if you're gonna be there for the ass cheeks, just understand it. You gotta be there for the talking sometimes. And the great thing about Instagram celebrities is you can cut them the fuck off immediately. <laughs> you know, you see a video, and if you the first thing you see is Britney Renner open her mouth, oh we'll cut it off. Like, <laughs> like you like you can you can consume her you know, on the level that you want to. It's not like you got to take the whole thing. You know, you make an excellent point. Because I will admit, personally, like if something significant happens and like my favorite IG model makes a post and I see them, you know, they're usually in a position where they're just, the camera's just facing their face and they're yeah. about to talk about some shit. You're like, okay, so you're going to have some commentary. If I look in the caption to see what it's just going to be about and like the first couple of words I her sentence sound like, you know, generic stance on such and such issue i will cut off the sound and just watch her face just move like it just, it oh, just no, i'm not even i'm not even watching your face because i'm not even there for your face half the time <laughs> if but i saw if, if i saw kk bash talking <laughs> i'm scrolling i'm gonna continue to scroll <laughs> if i ever hear her open her mouth this is in a suit like this begins to open her mouth bro if she's in clothing i'm mad that's so funny. No, I think you got a good point. And I do, I do, I love what she's doing personally. I absolutely yeah, love she's it. She's great. Uh, she's just, and I love how she just carries herself and she's just not, she's just not being intimidated by people. Um, yeah, I see nothing wrong with it. My only question still to this day, I do wish they would get to this in, the, in these interviews is, did she in fact like scout out PJ Washington when he was 18 years old? Because if she did, that would be fucking weird to me. And I mean, honestly, predatory. It's predatory as shit. Weird? Yeah. I don't know. I don't think it's weird that people are motivated by the thought of, you know, great financial gain. I think it's weird if you're scouting out, if you're actively pursuing an 18 year old to do that. It's weird as fuck to me. Nah. And she was like her mid 20s. It's fucking weird. If that's true, I don't know if it's true or not. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Well, PJ Washington was a five star recruit, 15th ranked overall nationally. I would have, I would have scouted his ass too. That 18 years old, and she was what, like 25? Yeah. Yeah, no. Nah. I don't know if she scouted him, but oh, she, she could have. She could have. That'd be fucking strange as fuck. And, <laughs> and especially, it's, especially, you know, for mandatory is all get out. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. More than anything. Yeah. So again, don't know if that's true. Don't want to put no speculation out there. Um, do you want to? I don't see why, like, some of the reports are like she won't let PJ see his kid. That shit, yeah, that whole shit, and the whole, just the narratives that people have just created around her, 
based off of this nigga just being butthurt on social media about his breakup is wow and then seeing how it's played out on her mental health like it's it's i'm telling you it's, it's fucking crazy like it's, it's actually wild yeah and i'm very happy if, if nothing else i am definitely happy that cam i don't know if his camp has told him like yo you're getting railroaded on these little talks and he just doesn't care or he just has no idea but i do think it's dope that he just lets her on there and not trying to censor her he's trying to quote unquote correct her sometimes but yeah for the most part he just lets her go off and she just speaks for herself and i think that's dope yeah so so um do you want to quickly do this marriage topic or you want to save it yeah we can save it okay table it red table talking you're gonna get yourself in trouble shit shut up (laughs) all right so this week we got a uh Dope, dope, dope. Thirst of the week for you. Hmm. Her name is. Oh, let me make sure I ain't got no Pornhub shit up here. Yeah, you know that got it queued up in the background. Okay. Um, Merc by a skirt. Um, she's a Twitch streamer. Uh, mm-hmm. She mostly streams Call of Duty. Um, she's also a sergeant in the U.S. Army. Oh. Right. Um. Oh. Yeah, she cute. Boy. She cute. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, she's sick. Um, you can catch her on Twitch at Merc by a Skirt. Um, it's got some threes replacing the E's, so it's kind of difficult for me to uh, tell you about it. Hold on, let me see some other pictures. Kind of right. difficult for me to tell you about it. It's, it's not difficult for me to tell you about it, but you know, she right? No, she's quite beautiful. Um. And so, yeah, she recently, uh, Swag was having an interview uh, with some, he was doing some interview on some platform and he shouted her out. That's what this video is. Best vouch I could ever get. Yeah. Um, Incredibly, incredibly talented. Um, You can catch her. Let me do her. Let me pop up her link tree. That'd probably be easiest. Um, You just check her out on IG. Merc by a skirt. Uh, M. 3RKD underscore BY underscore A underscore skirt. Very complicated. I ain't gonna lie to you. Yeah. Um, if you search uh, skirt on Twitch, she pops up in the couple first few. Um, yeah, man. Go check her out. She found us all get out. Very nice. Shout out to all the female gamers out there just doing y'all things. Clapping cheeks. Absolutely. Love to see it. Bro, I, I watch. <laughs> it's so funny that, like, watching girls just slaughter dudes on games. Oh, bro. It's so funny. I'm telling you. But, yeah. Stop. Girls can clap cheeks too out here. Dude, especially on like Apex and stuff. Like, shout out to Ninjala. I want to get on the podcast. We're going to try to figure out a way to make it happen. <laughs> She she won the Netflix tournament. Her and um, you follow Bush Kai too, right? Yeah, I follow Bush Kai. Her and um, Bush had won the Netflix tournament they had a couple years ago. Like just slaughtered people. Really? The funny thing about most Twitch streamers is they're usually good in like pub lobbies, and some of them they use a little VPN tactics to get in the bot lobbies as well to just slaughter new kids. Yeah. But then they get in these private tournaments and just get like Iceman Isaac to be getting clapped up in these little pri- private tournaments, and it's so fucking funny. Isaac like, does. Isaac be getting mopped, son. Uh, um, Swag but, is actually pretty good in those private tournaments. Who? Swag. Swag, Swag is just... Swag be doing lines of cocaine before tournaments. Like that's that's what he do. <laughs> but, yeah, man. She she counted in that Netflix tournament and killed everybody. So, shout out to y'all. Right. Good deal, man. Well, I enjoyed the episode. Thank y'all for joining us once again. Um, mm-hmm. We'll yeah, be back. Sure, Will's going to hopefully watch... Batman again, and we'll come back and talk about... Is it coming out on HBO Max soon? I believe it is, yeah, within like a week or so. Oh, yeah. So I guess you're not going to that review for like a month from now, <laughs> but we'll see what happens. Until then, until then, love y'all. Hold it down. Peace, peace.